So uh, I'm going to read two passages. One, the first one from uh, Richard Dawkins, and the second one from Daniel Dennett. <clears throat> so this is Dawkins. What lies at the heart of every living thing is not a fire, not warm breath, not a spark of life. It is information, words, and instructions. If you want a metaphor, don't think of fires and sparks and breath. Think, instead, of a billion discrete digital characters carved in tablets of crystal. If you want to understand life, don't think about vibrant, throbbing gels and oozes. Think about information technology. And now, uh, Dennett. If you think of yourself as a center of narrative gravity, which is an abstraction defined by the brain's information processing, um, if that's what you are, your existence depends on the persistence of that narrative, which could theoretically survive indefinitely many switches of medium, be teleported as readily, in principle, as the evening news, and be stored indefinitely as sheer information. If what you are is that organization of information that has structured your body's control system, or to put it in its more usual provocative form, if what you are is the program that runs your brain's computer, then you could, in principle, survive the death of your body as intact as a program can survive the destruction of the computer on which it was created and first run. So, these guys are supposed to be, you know, the hardcore materialists, the guys that take science seriously and don't import any kind of supernatural or... Um, anthropomorphic or phantasmagorical ideas into their their philosophy or their, their science, their truth talk, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yet, what do you what do you guys hear and, and girls hear about? Or what do you hear in the in these passages? I mean, I basically hear a form of of Platonism which has abstracted information, or in other words, the true objective structure of reality, from what we, what we actually experience, our embodied existence as human beings. So, in other words, the truth is, is never something we experience. It's always hidden from view, but yet totally in control of what's going on. So, you know, Dawkins is the creator, the founder, uh, the person who originated the genocentric theory of, um, or the genocentric interpretation of Darwinism, which basically has it that there is this disembodied informational structure uh, embedded in nucleic acids, which produces or codes for or computes your your body, that your phenotype, and, you know, by proxy, your consciousness, which is reducible to the body, uh, as far as, you know, Dennett and the standard materialist picture is concerned. So, you are a genetic computer, uh, you're programmed by digital code, which is not material, apparently, it's eternal. Um, this is, this is... Platonism, you know, and usually we don't think of Plato as the scientific one. That was Aristotle, right? So it's, you know, and then Dennett is removing our consciousness from its medium. He's basically saying, yeah, you have a soul. It's information. That's, he's just changing, he's using information, which is a popular word to use because we're also fascinated by computers. But he means essentially the same thing as a, a, a Christian in the Middle Ages meant by the soul. So, you're seeing in these most reductionistic thinkers, supposedly, these materialists, a form of anti-materialism, a form of Platonism. And it's glaringly obvious, I think, 
it, it's just fascinating to me. Um, you know, like the, someone like me who, who sees mind and, and matter as, as the same, or, or if not identical, then at least um, two poles of, of the same uh, existence, the same reality. And, uh, and I'm called crazy and uh, absurd and fantastical, and yet, um, if, I mean, uh, it. it if we're going to be materialists and focus on what we see and actually experience, um, then mind and, and matter, mind and body are the same thing. There's not this soul, this informational um, construct of, of eternal ideas that are invisibly embedded within us and somehow make us like we're machines built by that code, um, or in other words, bodies controlled by a soul, uh, I don't, I think that's like, uh, the worst kind of vitalism, the, the, the silliest, most naive kind of supernaturalism that we don't need to do, and in fact it's kind of, it's a put down of, of the reality, which is much more complex, uh, far more beautiful because it's more, it's more delicate, it's dif more difficult to understand than such an easy simplification based on a total abstraction from the reality. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just, just me and my crazy ideas, but, you know, I'd rather see mind and matter as part of a single continuum rather than import this, this dualism, this complete and utter separation between information and its medium, between the mind and the body, consciousness and the brain, hardware and software, you know, because it's, it's, it's an interesting metaphor for, for the brain. We talk about the brain as the hardware and the mind as the software, but the thing about a brain is it grows itself, so its software and its hardware aren't separate, they're actually part of the single process. Um, the growth, development, and development of the body and cognition and consciousness. They all happen at the same time. Um, that's, that, that just seems to make more sense to me, more sense in terms of, you know, trying to understand reality naturalistically rather than supernaturally or uh, you know in a Platonist way because that's that's what I see here tell me what, what you see uh, let me know if I'm wrong